Tipto, that's 639, 4th of the 7th, 2019. Happy 4th of July for all the American listeners. I uh, hope you're having a good day. Uh, I'm your host, Glenn Goodman, and here is another episode of Aussie Tech Heads. We have a special guest in the studio this week. I'll get to him in a second, but uh, I've got to tell you that we are brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au. Register your, register your company fast and easy and direct with ASIC. All documentation provided within less than about 10 minutes after you fill the form in, ABN, GST, PAYG, and uh, the other one I missed, all available. Also, ABN, PAYG, GST, TFN, there you go. And also, ATH, webhosting.com.au. Servers operate on an SSD drive, immediate activation, SSL certificates, Aussie support and more. And, I don't know why I'm speaking so fast, I won't make the show end any earlier. <laughs> and Aussie Bytes, uh, clock faces. If you want a, uh, on your Fitbit clock face in the Fitbit app gallery, you can go to Aussie Byte, choose one of their designs and use the promo code ATH19. Uh, for 33% off. Thank you, Jace. All right. Normally we are on Facebook and you can call us in live, but we have an audio issue this week, so there won't be, there is no live Facebook, so no one will be watching us. So um, hello, people who normally watch us on Facebook and who are now this week watching us on YouTube. Hello. Uh, tune in radio, go to aussietechradio.com and that's uh, you can get that on the Tune in radio app as well. It's wall to wall, back to back Aussie podcast, a bit of a variety of different podcasts. New shows up every Friday. You can catch us on the youtube.com or forward slash Aussie Tech Eds and uh, the show notes are at aussietechers.com.au forward slash podcast. So, who have we got as a special guest? Well, if you're on the video, you can probably see him skulking around in the background there already. And look, look and, and quite honestly, we should leave him there, little Shane over there. <laughs> but we we did give him his own camera. Well, no, he didn't. He's got one on his laptop. Yeah. But, but anyway, let's uh, let's quickly catch up. Actually, what I'll do is I'll uh, we'll go to Jordan and Joe, and then we can all have a chat to Shane. Hey, uh, Jordan, how you going? How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good. here. Good. How's, how's, uh, how's your week? Yeah, good. I wasn't sure if I was going to be in or out tonight, and then I came here with the audio issues, and I'm like, oh, I hope I'm not too much for it. No, you'll be right. And uh, also... Uh, Joe, how you going, Joe? Yeah, hey, I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Yes, I had a few little audio issues and computer issues and whatnot. Uh, yeah, so something's gone wrong with my audio, apparently, in my computer. So anyway, that's so it's audio only this week. So uh, happy days, eh? Happy days. Uh, now, Shane, how you going? I'm good, Glenn. I mean, I know that um, we're in the Secret Hub studios, but I think forcing me to wear a, a, a <laughs> pillowcase over my head on the way here so I didn't know where I was going I thought that was a bit much that's right I had to walk through f- four sets of doors and uh, jump into a telephone booth <laughs> ring the triple zero and take the elevator down yeah, like that's... the back cave <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we, we stuck we had to we had to stick the the, uh, the pillow slip over his head because you know no, not, not not too many people want to be able to know where the Secret Hub Studios are. Very uh, exquisite location. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, well, what's been going on, Shane? What's been, let's have a catch-up. What, what have you been up to? You still doing your podcast? Uh, still living in Perth? What's the go? Yeah, still living in Perth. Um, still doing the, the podcast, Mindset Opinion. Um, we've dropped the video and we're just doing audio now. Um, it's uh, supposed to be a weekly show, but it's kind of weekly-ish. Um, and the other co-host is uh, Phil Edwards. I caught up with him last week. I was in Melbourne and um, Gate crashed his other podcast, Geeks Interrupted. And now I'm on the Gold Coast and I'm Gate crashing yours. Cool. Now you don't do uh, Sydney. You leave Sydney out of your journey, don't you? Is that right? Yeah. Well, I mean, now I don't really know people in Sydney as well as like I know people both in Melbourne and up here on the Gold Coast. Right, okay, um, fair enough. I mean, I know of people like yeah, Eric and, and um, Mike and all that kind of stuff, but I don't I, I don't think I know them well enough to kind of, you know, um, go visit them and all that kind of stuff. But if I'm wrong, feel free, Eric or Mike, to um, to send me an invite and I'll come over. Hmm, all right, nice. Uh, so, uh, so you're still working, what, about an hour away from Perth or something like that? Still living in uh, Mandra. My house is still on the market for anyone interested. Um, and yeah, I'm still working in Perth, still working with the same mob that I was last time I was here. I was here last time uh, around the AFL Grand Final, because that's what I was in Melbourne for, and watched the mighty Eagles beat Collingwood. Yes, right. Well, I've got no idea, sorry. Uh, that's Collingwood, what Jordan, Eagles. Jordan does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no idea. Talk, talk to me about the Sharks and the Broncos, and uh, and which just reminds me, I've just forgot to put my footy tips in today. I hope there's no game today. If there's not, I'm safe. Um, otherwise, I'm, I'm locked out this week. But anyway, doesn't matter. All right, let's get into some uh, <clears throat> stories then, um, shall we? Let's go with uh, 
my first one, police charge a man with telco sabotage. How's this, dude? 24-year-old Wollongong man is alleged to have committed 30 offences, no less, relating to malicious damage of telecommunications infrastructure uh, across Illawarra and the southwest Sydney regions. The alleged offences took place in April uh, in Wollongong and south... Blah, blah, blah. They just repeat themselves. Uh, police allege the man cut the cabling within telecommunication infrastructure, which caused FPOS facilities in neighbouring commercial business to go down. So while the FPOS was down, he went into those stores and made a couple of fraudulent FPOS p- purchases. That was nice, wasn't it handy for him? The man was... Was, char- that, was that a Telstra line or was that an Optus line? Or do you know? Does it say? Uh, doesn't say. Uh, I'll keep going. I might say further down. Uh, it said the man made a number of fraudulent purchases while using the FPOS was offline. The man was charged with 30 offences including intentionally, recklessly destroying damaged property, tamper with facility owned by a carrier to hinder operation and dishonestly obtain property by deception. The matter is now moving to the Wollongong local court in August this year and police are, inquiries are continuing. Now, it doesn't say, Joe, but um, why, why do you ask? Because uh, it wouldn't be too hard to, you know, to rip down some cable somewhere, that's all. No, no, that's right. So, like, most of the time, you know, you can, well, if it's going on the, or well, FPOS, if it's going through the telephone line, they still go through telephone lines. It's all going through bloody uh, the yeah, MBN now. Yeah, ADSL. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Well, you know, I suppose, you know, those the, the wires, they still what, roll up the side of the building and across to a telegraph pole, I guess. All you've got to do is just snip one of those. Well, that's right. Grab a, a big, you know, train cutter and just, like, bang. Yeah. Snap. Snappity snap. doodah. And there you I, go. And I guess while the FPOS is down... I haven't yep. given anyone any ideas. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I don't think you would have, Joe. The story would have if they're that, that, that's, uh, that way inclined. And, uh, yeah, but I, I guess, like, once the FPOS is down, I guess they go in and when they use the machine, because it's down, the bank will, you know, pretty much uh, just let you let the machine do the purchase and then connect and, and do it after the, after the power comes back on or the connection's back up. But, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, a bit of a worry. I guess a lot of machines these days are four G backup, aren't they? With the with the uh, FPOS. I know uh, my brother who's got a shop down in Kingscliff, and he, uh, I think he changed over to the four G Wi Fi FPOS terminal. So if the MBN goes down, he's on eighty cells. So if that goes down, he's got the four G backup, um, and pretty bad service in Kingscliff for Telstra uh, and whatnot. So he can. I think he's got a Vodafone phone, so he can still hotspot the FPOS to the phone if he had to. But, uh, Interesting you said that. For, for a moment, I thought you meant uh, GSM back up on the actual link itself that got put down um, rather than individually have backup. Right. Yeah, no, I think it's individually got backup. Well, he's got individual backup. Um, yeah, so the GSM, I think, I don't know, that's all, that's gone now, isn't it? Didn't they can that? Is that dead? The the, the the GSM stuff. What's the what's that? That's the old the old transfer technology. Yeah, three G. You know, three G, four G. Yeah, yeah. But the old the old what is it? The Edge network. And there's another really old one. CDMA. Edge. Yeah, Edge and CD. Ah, oh, CDMA. Not CDMA. Sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's all. Um, that's what's going on. So that's, yeah, that's how he goes. Uh, goes and gets some money. So uh, that's no good. Um. Yeah, cool. All right. I have, I've got a lot of pictures, but as we have a few technical issues, I can't show you any. <laughs> so you'll have to look at us for a while. Uh, all right. Um, what have you got, Joe? Where'd you go this week with stories? I, I found a, 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 an interesting story when it comes to tracking um, pixels. Um, the pixels and uh, what's known as the superhuman app. So what do you um, mean? It, what's so tracking pixels and in, as in what do you mean on the screen or what do you mean? Well, there's a... Um, there's, there's a company called Superhuman who, uh, who made an app that allows people for about 30 bucks a month to uh, track uh, whether something has been opened or closed in an email. Oh, right. I'll, I'll give you a bit of a rundown what it says. It says that it's a, um, a $30, $30 a month service um, and it automatically tracks um, every time a recipient opens his email and then shows you their location. Um, and that's only because they've got hidden pixels within the email. Ah, I see. So so they're actually they're geolocating him or are they just sort of using the, the browser location? 
Do you know? Yeah, basically what, what they do is um, when you open up an email, you automatically download the image from the server, right? That image has a, a, a hidden pixel in it. And the pixel size is like um, the size of one by one or something really small. Like mm. you, could, you could picture the pixel of a, of a screen, a small pixel. You, you won't even be able to see it. Mm. So it's, they've got these little pixels that they have um, in, within these um, pictures and, and images. They get downloaded. And um, you don't even know that they're there. No, and so but behind the pixel, they've got some code that sends all the information required back to back to base. That's right. Oh, that's so you nice. usually use a, um, an app called Superhuman, which is designed for that purpose. So I'm not sure exactly how that works. I don't have the app myself. Right. But, but somehow via the app, it allows you to send emails and track the emails when the other person opens it on the other end. And it also gives you their location. So, okay, so the app's called Superhuman. That's right, yeah. And Oh, yeah, 30 bucks a month. Very interesting, Joe. That that interests me. I was just trying to read read a bit of that while you were speaking. That, that's very interesting. Yeah, so some of the things that people use them for is like if someone knows when you're at home, and when you're away, so you know that they can actually, you know, oh, we'll send this guy an email. We'll see whether he opens it at home or whether he opens it away. Yeah. Now, is there a, a, a kryptonite to this superhuman? Well, there's only a few little ways you can protect yourself from it. Um, one of them is uh, to use Google Mail. Right. right? They use the Gmail, uh, the Gmail servers, and although they can't stop you from um, sending out the pixel but they can't stop you from letting them know where you've opened up your email so rather than because what happens is that google's reroutes all the emails um through their own proxy servers right yes so yeah. therefore it says that it's going through google it doesn't say it's going through your actual email address at your place right so the so the rerouting is activating the the pixel code well basically it's just telling this the person who's actually using the program or the software it's going through it via Google, but it doesn't say it's either going through. Now, there is another link on that on that page there that shows you and it tells you like what time you've opened it, uh, the location you opened it, and it gives you like a suburb or, or a town. Right. Is that there's a Wikipedia link? Is that it? That's not That's it. That's the one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, let's have a look at uh, that little fella. Open link, copy link address. Let's have a look at that. Uh, paste, paste, and go. Now, what did you say? There's an image down here somewhere? Uh, actually, no, it's not that one there. Sorry, my mistake. It was something else that I was reading up on. Oh, yeah. So, well, in any case, that the, um, that's, a very, that's a very interesting thing. It's, I can see that it can be used for probably marketing as well in a, in a, in a pretty intense way. Yeah, correct. Spammers will know and fishers know when, when you open up the email. Like if you tell your marketers send you an email and it could be spam and Mm. You know, sometimes things. Oh, this is interesting. I'll see what this is all about. Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't get any, you know, any, any you know, like bugs or anything happening on your screen. But at least it sends them back and a detail saying, "Oh, this guy, he at least opened up this email because he thought something was interesting in it." Mm. Well, I guess like yeah, you know, that's be careful about things like that. Well, I think like in the normal in the mail clients that are out there today, what have you got like the Mac Mail say on the Mac, and you've got say Outlook to a certain extent you can send and uh, send read receipts and deliverable receipts and all that sort of stuff but it's still the user can still say no I don't want to send a receipt or the recipient can still say no I don't want to send a receipt um, so Gmail I think there are plugins for, for open if you open them up and whatnot. Uh, if you send them out through MailChimp they've got the, the talk back to MailChimp when the person opens it up what sort of computer and everything that they've got that when they open it up and all that sort of stuff and there's other services like that but just for the normal uh, you and me, yeah, this this probably sounds all right if you're not using uh, one like Mailchimp or something. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested in that. Thirty bucks could be a bit steep, but yeah, still. Yeah, there's also there's also, also other little things you can do, and you can also turn off automatic um, image loading when your email client um, gets the mail because you know how you can turn that on and off. Mm, yeah, you can turn that off, um, but then you can't see the picture. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they're getting very um, very clear on how they use it as well because. Although it might be um, a picture that's got the pixel in it that allows them to track what you're doing and, and when, where you've seen it, sometimes you, they also put it in the signature of, of your email, of their email. Ah, yes. Right? So it could be like a little little logo or something and they put it in there. 
Yeah. Uh, sometimes they can even put it in the text of the email somewhere. Um, so uh, it's really hard to pick up. Now this uh, is just as cool, just for, for terminology's sake. Uh, it's called a web beacon or web bug tracking bug web tag page tag pixel tag. I like web beacon. I'm going to remember yeah, that. So there's, there's um there's other ways there's other names that people call them but um, you know Facebook calls it a, there's also other companies that use them as well there's a, a Facebook calls it a pixel so mm. you may have heard of Facebook pixels but I think that's uh, they use that a lot on their advertising and on tracking um, who's seen what and how and when and how and where it was and sort of things like that yeah you can put that Facebook pixel on your web page and then that'll that's report right. back and you get all the stats about it. Yeah, that's uh, that's another fella. Yeah, yeah. Google's version of that is the Google tag. Um, and Amazon also has uh, pixels for theirs as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, look, it's, it's everywhere, isn't it? How do, oh, what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> you you go- probably, um, I mean, it's extreme, but if you turn scripting off, um, then it shouldn't work because basically what it sounds like it is, it's, it'll be a bit of JavaScript behind that pixel. Um, I mean, other things that they can do is because the pixel's so small, they can make it a white pixel and then just have it anywhere on the um, on the body of the email, so it actually just blends into the you know a blank part of the the page. We'll all have to turn into Steve Gibbs, and he doesn't like scripting. He turns everything off, doesn't he? There's no, no job. I think he, I think he's caved in. Has yeah, he? Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I haven't listened to Steve for a little while. I should give you another well, shot. It even says here that Mailchimp is the like the database and email database for Mailchimp. They also use some sort of um, pixel technology to track their emails around the world. Around. Oh right, yeah. Because I know I've, when I've used Mailchimp, you, in the back end, you get all the the stats about who's opened it, uh, what time they've opened it. And so that's how they do it. Something like that. That's this is how they do it, really. Yeah. Mm. Oh, interesting. Um, what do you reckon, Jordan? Good, bad, ugly? Um, to be honest, I wasn't really... I tuned out there a bit. <laughs> Sorry. I was still reading news stories, trying, right. to, trying, well, to, trying well, to find something I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here with everything that's happened tonight. Well, we won't ask you then. No, don't ask me. Skip, right. skip me, move on. All right. Um, have you got any more there, Joe, with that one? Any more to tell us? Um... Well, that's probably about it. That's given yeah, us a- the other thing I can say is it's 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 considered you know normal business today. Mm. Um, yeah, there's nothing much you can really do about it. So just be aware of it. That's all. Yeah, I think that's the thing. It's uh, you just can't get away from the technology, can you? Like, there's no point in going back to pen and paper and sending letters. That uh, takes a bit of time. Um, yeah. What are you gonna do? Like, yeah. <laughs> As, as you were saying before, um, Glenn, there's a, there's a thing here that says that there are browser extensions like Ugly Email and Pixel Block that yep. try and sniff out these pixels when you go to a, a website or an email. Right, right. Block them out. Yep. Yeah. So if you're really concerned about that sort of thing, try and you know, look for something that's called Ugly Email and Pixel Blocker. Well, you used and, to see... Uh, that will help. Like in your travels, I've seen like people doing like trying to increase SEO and all that sort of stuff by doing the, you know, how they... Not as not as bad as like a link farm, but they'll they'll start putting their so, say as a web developer, they they put their website say on every page that they build, but instead of it being visible, so it you know detracts from the page that's built, they'll put it in in white text somewhere, you know, so that you'll never see it unless you highlight the page and run your mouse over it. Uh, you'd never see it, but it's there just as a backlink for for the web dev. So I've seen that sort of stuff happen, and it's probably something similar to that if you want to say that. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that gives us a bit of a, a bit of an understanding of that. That's a good one, Joe. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at that after after the show probably tomorrow. And uh, is it? Yeah. Oh, you probably don't know. But is it thirty? Is that the thirty bucks minimum, or is that a? It's thirty dollars per month. I mean, I I haven't subscribed to it. Um, I haven't got I haven't downloaded the app, so I don't know what it actually looks like. But I, I did find it interesting that you could that anyone can actually do that. Hmm. All right. A- any more, Shane? You got any more for that one? No, no, I'm good. Yeah, good. Right. Now those on the audio, Shane's in the studio, as I said tonight, and he's sitting behind me, and so he's just got to pipe up if he's got anything to say. <laughs> so, um, so pipe up, Shane, if you've got something to add, like you have been doing. I just hit you over the back of the head with this. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, don't do that. You'll hit you'll you'll hit something off the off the computer, and we'll have to restart, and everything will blow up, flames everywhere. Um, <laughs> A triple C, yeah, like Samsung's phones. A triple C sues Samsung over slippery mobile phone ads. 
So apparently these Samsung phones, and now Jordan, you might be able to tell us what models that that would be, the water-resistant ones. Uh, the Australia, the ACCC has taken Samsung to court over advertising for the supposed water resistance of some of its mobile phones. So the ACCC alleges Samsung's advertisements falsely and misleadingly represented Galaxy phones would be suitable for use in or for exposure to all types of water, including seawater and swimming pools, and would not be affected by such exposure to water for the life of the phone. Bloody game uh, claim. When this was not the case, <laughs> there you go. That's why they're in the court. The ACCC statement said, also it's aware of instances where Samsung denied warranty claims for customers whose phones were damaged when in the water. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if you'd be your $700 phone. I don't know if you'd take it near water anyway. Uh, no. would, would you, Jordan, would you take your phone near water even if it said water resistance? No, not at all. My, I've got a Google Pixel, and in the first week I had it, it said that it's only dustproof, and I dropped it in there. I dropped it in the esky at work, and right. it came out fine. So it said it wasn't water resistant, and it, and it was. So I don't know what's going on there. That's quite opposite. But I was also talking to someone um, today down at the supermarket. I was looking at the Bluetooth speakers and stuff on the shelf, and, and we were looking at those. What do they call them? A yeah, something. What is it? U UB or whatever they're called. Right. And and someone said to me, "Oh, they're waterproof, aren't they?" And I said, "Oh." And the, and the lady get behind the can said to me, she goes, oh, they are waterproof, but she said, I wouldn't trust it. No. So really, really, do you want to trust it? Well, that's right. Maybe us- Whether they say it is or isn't, are you going to go down the beach and are you going to leave your Apple Watch on when you go for a swim? No. I, well, that, well, you know, they reckon I'd probably, yeah, what would you do? Wait, you'd have to do it, say, you'd have to do the test the next day or within the 14 days of, like, say, the Apple warranty, wouldn't you? Replace, no questions asked. You'd have to do it Absolutely. straight away. Yeah, you <laughs> want to be able to get it replaced straight yeah, up. Straight straight away. But yeah, I mean, if they say they're waterproof, you know, it's it's up to you. Yeah, well, Joe. I, think I wouldn't trust it. Joe, chuck yours in the pool to see what happens. Would you chuck, Joe? Uh, no, I, no, I wouldn't trust them either. No, I don't know. I, I saw my brother, oh, for, I mean, for whatever reason. Stuff like that, I probably would, mm. but I wouldn't go swimming in them. No, no, I saw my brother for whatever reason. This was an iPhone. I reckon he could catch the phone as he dived into a pool. So anyway, someone threw the phone up into the middle of the pool and he jumped in to catch it. Hey, he missed it. Went straight, <laughs> to, went straight to the bottom, didn't turn on after that. Tried no. to... Tried the rice, tried everything. I, I had a friend who had one of those expensive JBL Bluetooth speakers, you know, like the size of a football, massively loud, unbelievable things, and he threw that in his pool at Christmas with all the kids and they're yeah. swimming around with the music going underwater. And Wow, that still worked, underwater. And volleyballing, it says it's waterproof. It's designed oh, to be waterproof. Yeah, right. What, what and the it? sounds coming out of it, it was some JBL speaker. I don't know what it was. I wonder big, what... I wonder it's what got you... like a handle on the side of it. It looks like a toolbox. It's so big. I wonder what you can hear underwater. Like you know, when you scream underwater, you can't really hear what's what the person's saying. I wonder if um, I wonder if you they reckon they reckon you can hear it, kind of. Yeah, right. And uh, Shane, would you would, did did you say you check yours in the water? No, um, I mean, there's obviously different levels. I can't remember the the numbers they use, but they're things like you know fifty seven, fifty eight, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. Um, I I mean I've got the same pixel as you that have Jordan and I mean I've you know I've splashed it when I'm washing ha- my hands and all that kind of stuff and it's so far been right but yeah I wouldn't take it for a swim. I dropped mine in the esky and I kid you not I was like where where did my phone go because the esky was you know under the bench kind of on the floor hmm. and I was doing my engineering and sound and stuff for the band looking around I couldn't find my phone and then I saw a glow in the bottom of the esky. <laughs> oh yes, oh, Paddock. No. Pa- I pulled it out. I'd had it. I'd had it literally under a week. And I pulled it out. It was fine. Paddock stations, and I think they said that the Google Pixel, the first one, was IP fifty something, whatever they call it. So I don't think it was even. I think it was only dustproof. Yeah, yeah. I think you're probably lucky that it was ice and not water. <laughs> oh, there was water in the bottom. There's oh. melted water in the bottom. Yeah, right. So it's like you know, kind of an inch deep of water at the bottom, and it was in the water, oh, wow. and it was. I was like going for a Heineken. <laughs> you oh, know the Heineken ad? Yeah. I had my hand in there. <laughs> Go in for a beer, come out with a phone. That's all yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> came out with a phone and a bright red hand. I couldn't find it. Gosh. Nice. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, so uh, cool. Uh, Joe, what do you got? What's next on your agenda? 
Um, people think that if they buy stuff from Amazon, um, that um, if um, the third party supplier doesn't, um, you know, warrant the product, then Amazon doesn't either. Mm. But apparently this week they had a, a case in uh, America where back in 2014, a woman uh, ordered a dog collar from a, a marketplace seller. It broke on a walk. Didn't fit uh, her. Sent the leash flying and permanently blind in her in one eye. Oh. Yeah, the seller ha- wasn't around to be found, couldn't find her anywhere. So the company accused um, uh, Amazon for it and tried to sue Amazon for it. And originally back in 2014, the court, the court said, no, nah, sorry, you can't be sued because it wasn't a seller under the law. Amazon wasn't a seller under the law. So what it's- That's right. But then right. she went, she um, she re- appealed this um, this ruling, mm. and today the court um, found that in her favour as well. You know, they're saying that um, that the rule, the court also ruled that Amazon is liable for its sole role in the sales chain, and therefore Amazon is protected for speech on its platform for speech type stuff but wasn't necessarily protected for the sale of goods in the real world. Right. Yeah, so the court said that while Amazon does does sell goods itself, it also allows vendors to sell their products through its marketplace and taking a cut in the process. So they're sort yes. of part of the sales process, so they're also liable. Right. I guess it probably comes down to, because I know, like, from my experience, like, say, with the Kogan and my security cameras I had, uh, whereas... Um, they they broke about eighteen months, and it was they had a twelve month warranty. They broke after eighteen. I said, well, under consumer law, I think you know this should be still you still should uh, uh, honour the warranty because I would expect the cameras to last more than eighteen months. And plus, it was the hard drive part of it actually. So I, I initially I started going through Swan, you know, the camera maker, and then they at the end they said we went through all the troubleshooting and everything. And at the end they said we can't do anything else. Uh, that's it. And so I rang up the Fair Trading and I said, I've gone to Swan and they can't do anything. And they said, where'd you buy it from? I said, well, Kogan. And they said, well, you need to go back to Kogan. They're the ones that do the warranty. And they're the ones, and that's right, because I went back to Kogan and I ended up getting my money back for them. So, yeah, yeah well, that's good. That is good. I mean, um, sometimes people, you know, buy stuff and they, the sellers don't want to you know, negotiate or anything like that. Apparently now, you, uh, because Amazon takes their cut in any of the mm. sales that are going on, they're also liable. But I guess, like, there's a, do you have to? I'm sure this would have all been argued. But is it <clears throat> like, see, the difference between Amazon and say Kogan in, in that example is that Kogan's the, a sort of a retailer. Amazon's probably not the, not really the retailer, but they're more of the like, the, their goods were sold on consignment. I guess, or they're sort of at arm's length away from the actual process. So it's an interesting ruling, for sure. I reckon. Well, yeah. What they've probably done is they've treated the person who supplied the camera as a supplier of Amazon's. So Amazon probably was treated as the retailer in that scenario, and the yeah. people who supplied the camera... The dog collar. Uh, uh, oh, the dog collar, sorry. Yeah, I was going with your example. The dog collar are um, a suppliers, were treated as suppliers of Amazon's. Yeah. Yeah, it must have, must have out, yeah, that's come out, yeah. But that's an interesting ruling, Joe. Very interesting. Yeah, it is. So it'd be good for the listeners to know that and keep that in the back of their mind if something ever happens. So this was uh, in the US, though, wasn't it? This yeah, one? this is in the US. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so the rule, the appeals courts. I don't know how high the appeals court goes or how high they are, but uh, yeah. Any thoughts on that one, Jordan? Well, no, no not really. Only would would eBay and places like that be the same? I don't know. Would they well, they'd have to be. Wouldn't they? They'd have to be. They're, kind of, they're all set up the same way, really, aren't they? That, that's well, interesting yeah. you say that, Jordan. I'd say if they take their car, I'd say they have to be, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so unless there's something uh, peculiar about the, the dog collar and why it was... Uh, yeah, but it doesn't the story doesn't read that it there is anything peculiar. Um, very interesting, very interesting. She, well, was, she was suing because she, she was made blind because of the... Uh, the, the leash breaking and then hitting her in the eye, not because the collar was broken. Mm. Right? So uh, there's, a, I mean, there's a difference with the the collar itself. Might only have been a ten or a fifteen or a twenty dollar collar, but the fact that she was uh, 
line as a result of the collar breaking. I think it was more of the issue here. Maybe. And then you know the the the, the seller can then can then wherever they source their item from can also forward the the blame onto them as well. It's the vicious circle. Well, it goes to China. You going to get anything yeah. out of China? But I'm I'm Not thinking that likely, but. You know, I've heard of stories happening before where people have had problems with items that they've bought from wherever and then those people blame the people who in the factory who made it, you know, so. Look, I'd just be speculating here, totally speculating, but I'm, because I'm sure that the terms and conditions from Amazon would have, you know, all, all care, no responsibility, you know, 100,000 times written all through it. And that is probably be right. So how does this woman come to sue? And I think Joe might have mentioned the, the, the point might have been because she was blind. She couldn't read the terms and conditions, maybe. I don't know. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. That might have been... That might might have happened because... Um, so she, she's bought in good faith from Amazon thinking they were the seller. So who knows? Who knows? No, well, she got made blind after she purchased it. Oh, right. Oh, poor lady. <laughs> oh, no. Is that right? She yeah, she blind. purchased it and used it and then it snapped and hit her in the head and then that's why she got blind. Blind. Oh, right. What I'm, what I'm understanding. Oh, well, she'll have to keep an eye out. Well, maybe she won't. To... Yeah, that's right. You had me confused from the start of the story because I thought you said the dog went blind. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. right. Uh, this, this, is what ha- this is what happened. Right, she bought a collar from the marketplace from a seller. She could see out of both eyes. All right. Now, uh, but the collar broke on, on, the, on a walk that she was taking the dog. Right. right? The leash... Uh, flew into her face, uh, into her eye, and and blinded her in one of the eyes. Yeah. Oh my God, that's no good at all. So one of her eyes. Yeah. One of her eyes. They got. They, I think they sell patches on Amazon as well. She might be able to get a patch. Uh, Microsoft slashes. Uh, you know, when you go and buy cheap stuff off the internet, you you know. Yeah, that's you, right. That's what happens. It's a given. You got to be careful. That's you know, what it's happens. like it's like opening email. You know, you, you just got to you got to think. You know, smartly about it. Aye, aye. All right, Microsoft slashes Windows 10 update times. Microsoft has again varied the way it will update Windows 10. Uh, these changes have been announced ahead of the Windows 10 19H2 <laughs> release. I've never seen that terminology before, so it must be the second half of 19. I doubt whether they're going to change the way they number everything. But anyway, so the so the, ne- the next major version will be December the September uh, this year, which will see this apparently new way of doing things. Uh, for users of the May update to Windows 10, updating to the new release will have a far faster update experience because the update will install like a monthly update. Well, that'll be good because, you know, when you do those uh, those big, um, the big updates, then, yeah, they can they take like an hour or so. Yeah. yeah some of them. And uh, look, I'll just show you the... I haven't got any pictures, but I can do some web shots. So I'll do the web shots for people on the video, so you're just not looking at me for the for the whole hour. There you go. Microsoft, so blah, 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 blah. Nothing interesting there, so we'll go back to me. Slash right. the update time, but, in, but increase the time it takes to be productive after you've done the update. Yes, uh, users of older Windows 10 versions will get the current experience. So update to May, and away you go. Uh, also, just a quick, well, here's one that we can have a bit of a chat about. Uh, Apple design chief uh, Johnny Ive, we all know Johnny Ive, is is to leave Apple. So he's been there for a long time. I'll get to that in a second. He's been there for a while. So Johnny Ive spent nearly three decades, there you go, at Apple, playing a leading role in the design of the iMacs, the the coloured iMacs, that helped Apple and Steve Jobs re-emerge from near oblivion back in the 1990s. Uh, And he designed the iPhone, as we know, regarded by many business experts as one of the most successful consumer products of all time. It's the most significant departure of somebody who was a core part of the growth story under Jobs, uh, said some of these anal- an analysis. So Johnny, so what's Johnny Ives doing? So he's probably got he's probably got a billion dollars, I reckon, in the bank. Uh, what is he going to do with the rest of his life? Well, he's made his own company, his own design company. Now, uh, it's called he's called it apparently, as the Financial Times have reported, he's called it Love From. One word, love from. So there's a love from Johnny? I don't know. But it's his, it's his new one. It's gonna. He says he will be based in California for now. Uh, he's told a, a newspaper he would work on Apple as a priority, uh, on Apple pro, uh, wearable technologies as a priority, in fact, and healthcare, in addition to unspecified personal passions. So look, I guess that's probably why he's actually left. 
because I'd say that he's uh, he probably wants a challenge. He's probably sick and tired of just designing iPhones for, for his whole life. So he's probably gone, well, what, you know, I can design other things. I, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. He probably thinks... Well, you know, trying to 30 years in one job can, 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 can get a bit tiresome too. Yeah. But, but do you reckon, does everyone agree that he's probably left because he just wanted a challenge just so he can design other stuff? Maybe. Well, he designed the building that they've moved into, um, so he had a hand in that. What I reckon he'll probably be open to now um, is designing phones for other manufacturers. So you might find that Google will go to him for designing the Pixel or um, HTC will go to him for designing their phones, that kind of thing. Well, I guess, well, yeah, that's a big possibility, isn't it? I, I suppose Apple can't really say too much but um, that's the way he wants to go but like, I've, got, I've just pulled up another post here just so we can all have a bit of a look at because uh, I found another one that said uh, five things Johnny Ive designed you probably don't know about so has anyone heard that he had designed a toilet and a sink I don't know if they're one in the same I, don't, I hope they're not <laughs> have you ever heard you all in one toilet well and a sink in it as well yeah, the sink in the um, the, a lot of the Chinese people they say haven't. It's like the sink is in the um, toilet. The sink is in the in the the barrel on the top, but you wash your hands in it, and then the water that you use to wash your hands gets used to flush the toilet. Oh, that's all right. I thought you meant you do your business in the bowl and then wash your hands in the same bowl. <laughs> no, that's not what you mean. No. <laughs> no, it's like a water saver to wash your hands in the top, and then flush. That what that used water is used to flush the toilet. But aren't you supposed to wash your hands after the toilet? Well, you use the toilet and then you wash your hands and you flush it and that water goes down and flushes the toilet. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you um, want to get technical, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'd put one of those in my joint. It looks pretty swish though. That toilet looks pretty funky. Little Japanese thing. If I'd come across that picture, I wouldn't have known it was a toilet. No, nah, looks like the only thing that fit on that would be a Japanese person. So tiny. Uh, he also did... Looks like, looks, an like Oli- a, looks like a funnel or something. I yeah, it looks it like an Olympic torch. Yeah. <laughs> Put in the petrol tank in my car and throw the petrol down it. Someone will be running down the street with it in their hand. <laughs> now, we also... We probably knew this one. The 20th anniversary Macintosh, TAM. Uh, 1997, Apple released an unusual computer to mark the firm's 20th birthday. Yeah, if you haven't seen, and I probably had not seen one of these either, but go and Google a... I'd hate to think what they're worth now. Yeah, well, oh, here we go. It was a limited edition product aimed at wealthy users who were prepared to pay at the time, at launch, $7,499. There you go. It's roughly about 12000 today. today uh, in a promotion. It doesn't... Uh, what's it say? Yeah, but what's it worth as an antique now? I mean, some of those old... Mac computers, just because of what Apple has done for itself, have made those things antique and worth a fortune. Yeah, but look at that. It's, that's rubbish. It looks it looks like one of those futuristic video phones or something. What did you mm. say it was called? It was an Apple what? It's a Macintosh TAM, T-A-M, M for Mary. Yeah, um, yeah it was an anniversary Macintosh or TAM for short. Uh, he also designed a... a how do you pronounce that? Lisa camera? L-E-I-C-A camera. In 2013, he collaborated with designer Mark Newson to create a one-off Lika, Lisa digital rangefinder camera. More than 500 models and 1,000 prototype parts were made uh, during the production of, of the single production. During the production of the single special edition device, it was auctioned to raise money for the Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis and uh, malaria. So there you go. He also designed, just interrupt me anyone if anyone's got any comments, but he's also designed the Hockey Puck Mouse. Go on Google those, you don't know what one of those looks like. They, they look like one of those, you remember the coloured Max? Probably something similar but in the size of a mouse. Uh, an all diamond ring, hello. Uh, this was another charitable collaboration with Mark Newson. Who's Mark Newson? Bloody boyfriend or something. But an even weirder one. Last year... The pair announced a ring made, maybe he was, entirely from meticulously cut diamond. The ring with its thousands of facets cut by laser guided water jet was to be crafted specifically to the highest bidder. It sold for $250,000 in September. There you go. How good's that? An all diamond ring. Hmm, interesting. All right. I wish someone had, had, would invent a, a mouse that's a phone. <laughs> 
a mouse that's a phone. Fi- oh, yes. Like, if you use your mobile phone as your mouse. Mm. Like, no one's, I don't think I've ever seen one. Like, you can get, you know, the else, the, the, the touchpad one. You can get an app that makes yeah. your phone into a touchpad, like a laptop. Yes. I mean, like an actual mouse on the bench. Yeah. yeah I right. reckon that'd be awesome. Because you go out with your laptop all day. Yes. Yeah. You know, take your phone with you. Why can't it be yeah. a mouse? Yeah, a little Bluetooth or Wi-Fi mouse. It's got the little sensor on the back. All like, it needs is the little sensor on the back and you can use your phone as, yeah. a, as a mouse. Oh, that's and a good idea. I don't know, why, I don't know yeah. why someone hasn't... I'm just giving away the greatest ideas, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. Now, see that, that's, I won't ever have any money or the knowledge to make it happen, so... That's love from Jordan, not love from Johnny. That's yeah. love from Jordan. Maybe Johnny's going to quit Apple and go and create the uh, phone mouse. Oh, well, look. We, we call it the eye mouse. <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the J mouse, the Jordan mouse. I remember when it, when J-mouse. Apple came out with the iPhone, everything, all these little businesses popped up everywhere with the I in front. Yeah, and Apple took everything. each one of them down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but look, I've got a little fingerprint in the back of my phone. Why couldn't that just put another little one underneath it for the little? Uh, yeah. I reckon it'd be unreal. I'd use it every day as a mouse. Yeah, you I would. would wouldn't I, I wouldn't. E- wouldn't even need a touchpad on my laptop. I just need the keyboard. That's a fantastic <laughs> idea. You should. Prototype, a paint, paint, and that you reckon? Pro, yeah, prototype. I'm really surprised. I've looked on eBay before. No, there's, I've never ever seen one. Yeah, right. All right. We're talking about ma- mouses and gadgets and all that sort of stuff. Uh, we have got a this week on new and upcoming gadgets with your very special new up and coming gadget person, Joe. <laughs> what is the new and upcoming gadget? <laughs> Try saying that three times. <laughs> What's the new and upcoming gadget, Joe? This week from the uh, the uh, Joe the Gadget Man Labs. It's a mouse. This week, this week uh, Jordan um, and um, Glenn would have what's called the Canon um, Tiny Clippable Camera. It's um, a little camera that connects to your phone. Um, it's going to be called the Ivy Rec, R-E-C. Um, it's a little camera huh? that's for outdoors, and it, it sits on your keychain. And it's about the size of a USB flash drive. It um, it connects wirelessly via Bluetooth or via Wi-Fi um, to the companion app that's on the phone, uh, which is called the Canon Mini. Uh, and it gives you live previews of um, what's what it's what it's got on. Um, basically, it um, it's a 13 megapixel camera. It comes in a one uh, one thirty of an inch uh, CMOS sensor. Mm. And that can record about 180 uh, p at, at 60 frames per second. Uh, it's waterproof for about 30 minutes in depth of up to three feet, and there's no pricing available at the moment for it. Uh, but it's hard to say whether this thing's going to be worth it or not. You know, to compete to something against the um, what's that other one? That really popular cam webcam Go- GoPro. The GoPro, that's right. Mm. Yeah, it's hard. It's 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 hard to see how how it's going to compete against the GoPro, but I reckon that if it drops, you know, considerably like half the price of a GoPro, it'll probably be a goer. Um, Ken <laughs> says that the camera's uh, going um, to be um. shockproof, um, going to be great for the outdoors. You can click it, click it to um, clip it to your uh, backpack while you're walking around or riding a bike. Uh, you could. Uh, Clip it onto your dog or to your cat's collar. Mm. See, yeah, just see don't send around. yourself blind. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that looks all right, doesn't it? I think I, I do note though uh, in the in the graphic on the website that it's up to thirty minute battery and a depth of one meter. So there you go. Will we throw yeah. this one in the pool? We'll see. Yeah. So at the moment, it's 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 um, Canon's started to go through the Indiegogo uh, crowd crowd fund. So if you're interested in that app and in, in that little uh, mm. tiny camera, just yeah. go to Indigo, um, Indiegogo and look for the Ivy Rec, subscribe to it, and then when it's ready to go, they'll send you out an invite to buy it. So they're saying that they're not saying any prices as yet, are they, obviously? No, there's no price at the moment. Mm. I th- but the I think the carrot is if you go in and uh, help them out in the initial production stages, I think the carrot is 30% off retail when it comes out. So that's the, um, yeah. So, look, that's not too bad, I think, Joe. I'm not, 
I could, I could probably use one of them. It's, it's handy enough, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's something you can, you can slip in your pocket, um, in, in your bag anywhere. Um, you want to do like a, a, a recording of some sort, um, take it out with your fishing. Yeah. This, uh, this would be really good spy cam. Because, you know, like the GoPro, you go, oh, look at that GoPro over there. But if you just stuck that on the desk and, you know, pointed it at whatever, no one would really know what was going on. Well, that's mm. right, yeah. Mm. So what, what do you reckon, Shane? you reckon it's a goal? Um, I don't really know what problem it's trying to solve. Um, I'm just looking over Glenn's shoulder, <laughs> the, the pictures and stuff. I mean, the spy cam thing probably won't work given that it's all fluoro coloured, but because um, it stands out a bit. But, um, yeah, it would be interesting to see what problem it's trying to solve because the GoPros and all that kind of stuff, they're bigger, they're sturdier, um, but at the same time they're small enough to be kind of, you know, um, be attached to things like motorcycles and, and um, drones and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah look, it's, it's portable. It's smaller than a GoPro. I think that might be the, the, the attraction for me, I think, as long as it... Well, well, well it's, it's uh, 13 megapixel. It's full HD shooting, 1080p, 60 frames a second, Bluetooth and wireless. What does the GoPro do that, that doesn't do? Probably deeper water, a GoPro. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd have a go at one of those. Good one, Joe. Good one. Yeah, so if anyone's um, got any features or any products or services that they want us to you know, talk about, <clears throat> send it to, uh, if they want us to talk about it on the Aussie Tech Head podcast, send me an email at joe at aussietechheads.com.au and um, we'll get in contact with you. All right, now just I've got a couple of little little ones just to round out the the evening. Uh, Iran, all the way over there, seizes one thousand Bitcoin mining machines after a power spike. This is something Jordan would be into. He'd probably have a couple of these running in the basement there somewhere. Authorities in Iran have seized roughly one thousand machines, uh, according to a state TV report. The action was taken following a spike in electricity consumption. Why aren't you allowed to use electricity over there? Uh, demand f- uh, for power rose by seven percent in June. And cryptocurrency mining was thought to be the main cause. Right? <laughs> wow. An, an energy minister spokesman said the state told the state media, uh, one researcher said Bitcoin was gaining more and more attention in Iran as a potential means of storing wealth. And they've got a few problems over there, I think. Uh, two of these Bitcoin farms have been identified with a consumption of one megawatt. Uh, by providing computing power for validating transactions on that network, mining machines own mining machine owners are rewarded with newly generated coins, making it potentially a lucrative exercise, especially when done on a large scale. So, a thousand Bitcoin machines. Let's see if I can find a picture. What do you think about that one, Jordan? Something you'd be oh, into? I think that you know the power the power consumption's got to outweigh what you'd make back in coins, wouldn't it? You'd have to think so, yeah. Bitcoin, well, I don't know. It depends how many you get. Bitcoin, 1,000 Bitcoin. I'm just going to Google this if we can. And I always thought that electricity companies were looking for spikes in electricity to catch people doing other things, not, not, <laughs> well, not, uh, you know, not selling Bitcoins or mining Bitcoins. Yeah, well, I suppose they don't like spikes in electricity, obviously, over there in Iran. But, um,. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, it's massive. I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of power to get. To, you'd want to be getting a good return on your bitcoins, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, what's that? Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, look at this picture here. Look at these guys. Bitcoin Crazy machine. That's a bitcoin machine in 2018. What's that fella? That's huge. Yeah. Anyway, what 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 is that? In, <laughs> Go it's Google all these one. all these smart people that are hacking everyone's phones and using those to help power their mining at you know with no expenses is <laughs> they're the ones that are making the money. Yeah, that's what you could use your fifty dollars server for, Glenn. Bit mining. <laughs> <laughs> I could. I I was showing you fifty dollar what for? On my server, I, I bought a server. You can see it behind me there. See the rack oh, server. Yeah, yeah and uh, I wonder how long it'd take you to mine your fifty bucks back. Yeah, I, I don't know. I couldn't. I didn't really get it going anyway. <laughs> it, was, I, it worked. Uh, it did work. I had to. I tried to. I dismantled the raid and everything, and I, I put free NAS onto it. And uh, but it was just damn too noisy. 
I, I loaded, I turned it on, and it sounded like an airplane coming through the window. Was, yeah, oh, it was huge noise. So, Get some um, new fans. Yeah, I, look, the, the main thing at the end of the day, what turned me off, it was like it, it had six uh, two and a half drive caddies in it. And to get the required space I wanted, I needed another six two and a halves, or I needed six uh, three and a half caddies. And I had no more caddies. And I think uh, so, I yeah. think you killed it when you put Freenas on it as well, didn't you? No, it still it still runs. I don't know what what did you say for me to do, Shane? Put something take, on it. Take, take Freenas off it. That that'd be the first thing. <laughs> make a ra- uh, router out of it. Use, That's what um, you say. Yeah, make yeah. a router out of it. Use PF sense or something. <laughs> Yeah, PF sense is awesome. I use that. Yeah, but not on a not on a bloody thing that sounds like a seven four seven coming through your window. <laughs> oh, oh, is my router still working? Oh, yes, I can hear it yeah, from here. Hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't get no Wi-Fi. I wonder if the router's okay. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, it's going. It's um, going. Yeah, so yeah, so I've, I ended up doing my a server reinstall over the last weekend, didn't I, Jordan? I spoke to you about the Open Media Vault, and I love it. I, I love it. <laughs> it's really easy yeah, to use. Freenas is just too hard. It's it's not hard if you if you want to get intricate, but you know, for the use something a bit more mediocre across the board that suits all kind of levels of um, users. In in you know, it's it's good. It's a good all rounder. Mm, yes. Mm. Yeah, it's good. So it was just nice, gooey, and all that. So yeah, I was really happy. Now, look, my last my last one for this week is Wolfenstein. We all know and love uh, Wolfenstein, even from the Apple Apple Two days. I remember Wolfenstein. Uh, so a new version coming out, Youngblood, uh, which for the first time Nazi images are to be shown in the game in Germany. Now I did I wasn't aware of this, but in Germany you're not allowed in the games you're not allowed to show anything to do with Nazi stickers or Hitler or whatever anywhere. Anywhere is it? Yeah, you're not allowed to. The anything Nazi related or swastikas is, is completely illegal in Germany. Right. Okay. Well, they they didn't take old Adolf as a as a patriot then. They, <laughs> they've they've ditched him. Yeah. Uh, Wolfenstein will be released on the 26th of July. Uh, previous previously gay previously German editions of Wolfenstein came. Oh God! I'll start that one again. Previously, German editions of Wolfenstein games changed Hitler's name and replaced the swastikas. But thanks to the rules being relaxed, they're now there. I'll show you some of the things. So this is a picture here of a a scene uh, before uh, for the rest of the world. That you can see on the armband the, the the swastika, and the rest of the world on the guy's armband has some sort of other little symbol. Uh, so that's what's going on there. Mm. Um. The Wolfenstein game set in the alternative reality where Germany wins the Second World War. The latest game is set in the year 1980. Blah blah blah, blah blah blah. They've developed two. Di- they've still developed two different versions because they're not sure whether the band would end in time for the scheduled release date. The German law considers symbols like the swastika and gestures such as the Nazi salute even. Uh, as symbols of anti-constitutional organisations, displaying them publicly is illegal. You're right, Shane. Very good. You're a worldly Shane in yeah. a, sitting behind me. I read. You read? You been to Germany? No. Uh, so the... That was a short conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so the Amazon... Oh, you're making shit up if you want me to. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's it. Uh, what do you think, Joe? You been to Germany? No. No? Do um, you like Wolfenstein? <clears throat> no. No. <laughs> One of the reasons they probably allowed it to go ahead is because of the fact that um, in the game they Germany actually wins the war. They were probably all right with that. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but like, I, I, what about you, George? Do you like Wolfenstein or whatever? Being the Germany? I can't even remember it. Even playing that that as, as, right. in my young years, like. Yeah, yeah. I, look, I remember playing it on the Apple Two, and then I tried to play it on the Xbox, and I, I can't handle all the buttons. <laughs> No, <laughs> that's crazy. I need more practice at it. But uh, look, that's yeah, that's what that's what happens. Wasn't well, Doom and Wolfenstein? Aren't they a similar? I game? used to play Doom, yeah. but yeah. I, I don't ever remember playing Wolfenstein. I don't. They're very similar, though, from what I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I think well, it, the the object of the game when it was on the Apple II was you just yeah walk through the the castle. It was in two D. You walk through the castle and uh, yeah. you kill all the Germans and then eventually you just get higher and higher in the castle or something and you come into a room and there's uh, there's just Hitler in the middle of the room and there's a there's a hundred SS around him and you just got to kill them all then walk over and kill Hitler. And I think we used to spend more time trying to link them all together. 
so we could play in the same room in the same oh, network. Oh yeah, little land playing the games. Little land party. Nice. Mm. Apple II wasn't up to land parties. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it was. Uh, yeah, it, you'd had the, the your cassette decks. That's what the Apple II was all about. Um, yeah. And then we we did eventually get a uh, a hard a, a uh, floppy drive for it, five and a quarter. All right, let's um. Let's, let's, Before let's, you go, I've got yes. a couple of headlines I've been reading while we've been sitting here. All right. No, I won't go through the whole stories because you'll be here all night, but Samsung teases that the Galaxy Note event's going to be on the 7th of August. Right, yep. That's worth keeping your eye out for if you want to watch the uh, announcement of the new Galaxy Note 10. Yep. Nice. Uh, and also, uh, what's this other headline? Google is about to steal another great feature from from iPhone iPhone, it's a similar feature to AirDrop. It's going to be called uh, FastShare. Right, right. So we able to share files amongst Android users and stuff using FastShare, the same way as you do with AirDrop. That's another one. Um, another guy has uh, an AI-powered cat door uh-huh. to let his cat in and out, but if it brings in a dead mouse or something, he doesn't, it's not allowed in. Right. I, thought that was, I thought that was a bit of a cracker. Yeah, yeah. Um, and OnePlus has also has accidentally sent a global push notification out to everybody saying ha 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 ha, laughing. Who sent that out? In in Chinese. Who, who sent that out? Uh, OnePlus. And who were they? Accident, accidentally sent a global push notification saying ha 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 <laughs> in Chinese right. to every one of their phones, I suppose. So it was a ho 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 ho. Yeah, as if to say, we've got you. Look out. Right. <laughs> that was a cracker as well. Okay, uh, nice. And Samsung has, has completed its folding phone redesign after screen failures. It's It looks like it's about to release the Galaxy Fold very soon. It's just about to hit. Excellent. So they've fixed all their little issues and they've extended their uh, screen protector all the way around the whole screen so nobody attempts to peel it off thinking it's a screen <laughs> Right, okay. and uh, they've raised. I think they've raised the screen up a bit so that the dirt doesn't kind of stay in there and stuff like that. So they're apparently close to re-releasing that. Mm-hmm. So there's about four stories in under a minute. All right, <laughs> brought us up to date with uh, Jordan's World. Good stuff. Jordan's World. That was a quickie while I was sitting here. That's why I wasn't paying attention the first half of the show. Your your camera's looking good this week, Jordan. Thanks, mate. Yeah. I thought I thought it was just me, but. No, the, 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 you are very light. You have been enlightened. It's very nice. <laughs> I can almost rub it for luck. Yeah, I can't do much about the content that it's displaying, but the, the, yeah, well, that's you know, right. <laughs> it's, look, it's looking as best as it can. You're actually giving me a compliment. <laughs> rosy cheeks. And... Yeah, a little bit rosy. What have you been doing? The, the, the camera just only tap, the camera just, only shows your chest up. Just, I can't see what just, you've been doing just to yourself. Patting my face until they go a bit red, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's end on a high. <laughs> um, I'll be looking for that. Look, I'll, I'll, to be honest, I'll be looking for that that Samsung Galaxy Note 10. I'll, I'll, I'll be interested in watching that announcement. I reckon that could be interesting to see what they've got for us. Mm. Yeah, very good. Mm. Uh, okay, so thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for downloading and watching on the YouTube. Sorry about there's no Facebook post this week, but I'm sure if you uh, if you got to the end of this on YouTube, well, you wouldn't care less anyway about the Facebook. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. Thanks, Shane. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for coming all the way from Perth. No worries. Thanks just, for having me. Just to come to the secret. And look, apolog- apologies for the uh, the um, pillow case. Um, next time, it'll, I'll get a black one for you. Okay. So do I have to yeah, wear it? Come on. Do I yeah, have come to... on. No, no purple pillowcases, you know, <laughs> pink pillowcases. You're trying to insult the man. <laughs> You're going to make me wear it on the way back to the hotel? Yeah, and then when you get out of the car, I'm going to turn you around three times and then take <laughs> it off. <laughs> what I'd be more worried about, though, Shane, is, is while you've got the pillow cover on, is you just don't know what he's wearing. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> or yes. you're walking around with a pillow, you know, a, a pink pillow slip. Just be, be be worried about what he's wearing while he's following you. Birthday yeah. suit, maybe. <laughs> he, might be, he might be in high. He might be in high heels or something in a wig. He just wouldn't know. <laughs> oh, I won't forget my lippy. Oh, right. <laughs> um, you're just you're just his little pillow slip. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, that's right. All right. Uh, okay, cool. So that's about all we've got for you this week. <laughs> so, yeah, so thanks again, Shane, for coming all the way over. And so it's good to see you again and good to see you going well and whatever you, whatever else. Is, yeah, hope Perth is nice to you. Yeah, no, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the weather's good. Yeah, good. 
<laughs> generally. <laughs> he doesn't seem too happy about going back. No, not really. When do you go back? <laughs> go back tomorrow and back to work on Monday. Uh, you gain five hours when you go back? Is that right? No, we're two hours behind you. Oh, two <laughs> hours. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Probably, yeah, two hours, yeah. All right, good stuff. All right, thanks, Joe. Thanks for the, the, the gadget of the week. And, um, no, thanks, thanks, guys. And uh, Joe's going to try and have another gadget as often as possible. And uh, if you want, if you got a gadget for him, yeah, Joe at AussieTechHeads.com.au. Uh, you can get Jordan at AussieTechHeads.com.au. Me at Glenn at AussieTechHeads.com.au. I don't know where Shane is. Where are you, Shane? Uh, you can get me at uh, Shane at ProsumerIT.com. Nice. There you go. And there. So that's all. So thanks, everyone. And uh, we'll see you all next week for another Aussie Tech Heads. All the best. And good night. Bye-bye.